What did your job want you to hide from customers? I work at a shoe store. And we recently got a shipment of clearance sandals. Aka years old sandals they had shoved in some warehouse. As I was putting them out I noticed some had green stuff all over them. Mold. We were instructed by corporate to wipe it off and sell them anyway. Luckily my manager is sane and refuses to put out the moldy shoes. But still some sketchy it. Restaurant. That we would reheat sauces for several days and depending on how many times this had happened they would look and taste completely different. I told my friends and family to not eat there as there was plenty of sketchy it going on there. I worked at McDonald's and they taught me how to pinch the fry carton just right while putting the fries into them so that it looked full. But actually wasn't. I only had one customer call me out on it. He shook the fries out into his bag and poured them back into the fry carton himself and it only filled up halfway. So I had to give him more fries. I was impressed and embarrassed. It's been 7 years and I can still see his face. Worked for a shady computer repair company that took an electronic recycling. He would charge a dollar an inch to dispose of old CRT monitors and then toss them into the dumpster. This was just one of the many shady things he did. Edit. A lot of people are saying they'll just toss their stuff in the trash. Please don't. There are legit places out there that will dispose of electronics responsibly. Look for companies that are R2 certified. I work at a movie theater. People are always trying to sneak food in. In our employee handbooks it actually says people can bring food in as long as it doesn't smell bad. It's funny to see customers nervously hide their bags so we don't see it. Edit. While this blew up. I work at a good rich quality theater. I think all theaters will let you bring food in because it's in the handbook but the dog thing is probably just ours. The reason my manager lets dogs in is because there's a homeless man that lives by the theater. He has a dog named Lucky and she is really well trained. Since she lets them in she lets other dogs in. But only if they're quiet and don't disturb the movie. Edit 2. I've only seen like 4 other dogs than the homeless man's dog. I think they were mostly service dogs. And one lady had her chihuahua in her purse. They haven't given us a reason to not allow it yet and nobody has complained. So if you show up at a GQT in the Midwest please don't complain about dogs. I speak for all employees at my theater. We like to pet them. Semicolon. Worked at a bike rent shop where we told customers we sanitized the helmets we rented via heat treatment. Heat treatment consisted of having some sorry ass high schooler run up to the top of the building. Essentially the attic of this old wooden structure. And just leave them in boxes. Or, if they were wet, hung from nails to drip and dry. I worked at an art glass store that sold glass. Mostly made in China with very few actual nice pieces. We were told to peel the made in China stickers off. If anyone asked where the glass came from we would say New Jersey. Which is where the supplier was from. I always felt like Danny DeVito and Matilda changing the odometer on his used cars. At U-Haul. We weren't allowed to tell customers that trucks charge their fee by the 24 hours. Which means that a customer renting a truck for 3 hours is paying just as much as another customer who is renting it for the whole day. For you haul employee asks if 6 hours is enough. Don't feel bad if you want to extend your time just in case. Edit. Since this is gaining some traction I think it's also worth noting to get the insurance if they offer it. It's only $10-16. At a daily rate. And doesn't hold you accountable if there are any damages to the vehicle trailer. We had a customer whose trailer came off their vehicle, causing him and the trailer to go into a ditch. He rejected the insurance which meant all the damages had to be covered through him. You haul may overprice a lot of its equipment, but that's the one thing I can recommend you put your money towards. They don't make it clear enough how important it is you get protection. Disclaimer. The insurance doesn't cover damage to the mom's attic and depending on the kind of insurance you purchased, there may be a deductible. I still recommend it based off of the customers I've dealt with and how it could have helped their accidents. However, you should at least read into it before taking some random Redditor's advice. I was a server at my first restaurant a few years ago. You got it for calling in sick. Even if you were legit sick. If you were sick. They would tell you to go to the bathroom and do what's needed, but get back to work a sap. If you went to the bathroom too often, sneezed, coughed, or did anything sick people do in front of customers, you got scolded. 
Everyone ducking hated that manager. I tried calling in one time because I was struggling to survive. I was puking and eating every 30 minutes. They were so pissed off because no one could cover my shift and said if I went home I would regret it. When I started work, I looked and felt like death. The first table I went to was a party. This lady said you don't look good. You need to go home and when I responded with I'm okay. No one can cover my shift and I need this job she got up and told me to follow her. As we were walking, she asked why I felt like I was going to get in trouble. She flipped her it when I told her and walked straight to the manager like she was on a ducking mission and said I am a director of human resources at Herpaderp. I can't believe you would let him work like this and then threaten him when he wanted to go home sick. I am going to contact corporate tomorrow for treating your staff in such an inhumane way and for putting your customers health at risk. When he tried to respond, he was bombarded so hard by this red hot ball of fiery Bostonian rage. I started having Vietnam flashbacks. It was so ducking brutal. I actually felt bad for him. She told me to go home immediately. She even offered to buy me an Uber home. And promised me there would be no repercussions in any way shape or form. I'm 6 feet 0 and at the time was pretty big. But I was honestly so terrified of this 5 foot nothing woman. I said yes ma'am and walked right out the door without clocking out. This was in front of staff and customers. The silence was palpable and I was in the limelight. I could feel the eyes staring me down as I walked away, iliating my pants from fear and my stomach hurting. I showed up to work a few days later and felt like a ducking rock star because my co-workers had the biggest it eating grins on their faces giving me a thumbs up. As I was walking to the back to clock in, I was stopped by this professional as duck lady in a nice woman suit. She sat me down and explained that she was from HR. Basically. I was told to never fear for my employment if I needed to call in sick again and to take one more paid day off to fully recover. I was like duck yeah. While I was walking out a co-worker stopped me and said dude. Duck face hasn't been back to work since that night you went home. I'm pretty sure he got fired. I didn't see him again until recently when he was my server at a diner I was eating at. The look on his face was priceless. He went from being a manager at a very successful high end pub to being my server at the equivalent to a Dennis. This wasn't the story you guys were looking for, but it's one of my favorite stories. The cup of soup and bowl of soup were the exact same size. People would pay more for a bowl, and just get a cup of soup and a bowl that were shorter and wider at the bottom than the cup. During uni I used to waitress at Pizza Hut. During one really busy shift the sign outside caught fire and our manager told us not to make a fuss. Keep serving and don't tell anyone. So as the side of the building was on fire, the fire engines turn up and firefighters put the fire out. We all carried on serving pizza. I still don't understand why our manager wasn't fired. Excuse the pun. For putting customer safety at risk. Edit. The sign was attached to the building not just a random one in the road. Second edit. At the time 95% of the staff were aged between 16 and 19, me included, and so we didn't really think we could just leave. If that happened to me now, of course I would walk out. Third edit, in the UK Pizza Hut still has restaurants with waiters and waitresses. We do have fast food Pizza Huts but they're more for collection delivery of takeaways. I've worked for two separate escape rooms. Everyone who didn't get out got really close. Usually we'll show you what you missed if there's only a few puzzles left. If we don't show you anything it's because we didn't want to make you feel bad. I used to work in a jewelry shop that sold cheap Chinese it's silver gold painted plastic jewelry. None of it being real metal. But every sale I had to upsell one of these $5 polishing cloths. You can't polish a turd the only thing this cloth did was rub the cheap paint off the plastic faster. I felt like such a con artist where all the stuff is. I worked at a supermarket and we regularly reorganized the aisles. Put the bread on the one end of the shop and half a year later on the other end. Things like that. Marking it up so we can put it on sale. Edit. I work at a small, family owned specialty store. I know a lot of bigger businesses have been caught doing this. But my boss really is to in order to compete with them and their prices. 
For a very short period of time I worked for an animal hospital. Their anesthesia machine hadn't been inspected in 10 plus years so the owner just gave the animals a ton of ketamine. They also regularly overbooked surgeries. Many many animals died on the table there and the owners would make us come up a story about the animal having a heart defect or sensitivity to anesthesia. The vet once forgot to declaw cat. Just forgot. And I was told to tell them it was because the animal didn't tolerate anesthesia well. It was a show of horrors and I left as soon as I found another job. Did. No I didn't report them. I was young and naive and an idiot. But within a few weeks after I left someone reported them and they were all over the news with various lawsuits so they did get theirs. Edit 2. I agree declawing is barbaric. Can't say I was upset when that left claws intact. I have two cats that still have claws all the way around. However the point wasn't how I personally feel about declawing but that I was told to lie to a client. One job wanted me to hide the fact that we were up selling grilled cheese. Edit. I'm glad you all think that this is as ridiculous as I did. The cheesecakes are not frozen. They are deeply chilled which from what I have gathered is an industry term roughly equating to frozen AF. Plus a bunch of other stuff. Worked at a nursery. Plants. Not babies. That sold Christmas trees in winter. We had to have two employees per customer in the lot at all times. One to talk to and distract the customer. The other to hold up the particular tree they were interested in and shake the rats out while said customer was distracted. Basically these people were buying $50 rat nests to put in their house. Besides hiding how much we are marking up equipment. Those of us in the field have to actively hide all of the duck ups that happen back in the office. Oh. It's on back order. It will be in next week. Means. That asshole Bob forgot to order it. Or. We're actually on credit hold with that company because our customers don't pay us fast enough. Yeah. There was a lot of traffic today, means. That asshole Steve gave us the wrong address and failed to mention the lack of a loading dock. I worked in the vegetable seed industry. Some varieties that were exclusive to certain customers were just repackaged and renamed seed of an existing variety. If something was underselling, they just changed the name. Rewrote the description and claimed it was a better sister line. It was always funny though when customers demanded the old line because the new one wasn't as good. We'd just shrug. Change the label back to the old name and off it went. The decaf at Burger King isn't actually decaf. It's just the regular coffee. But watered down. My uncle used to work at a restaurant many decades ago as a teenager. It was his job each morning to strain the cockroaches out of the pancake syrup containers on each table. Daily Deal Company, the fact that the third party Android tablets we were selling on our site for Christmas, weren't even in production yet. We were basically just taking their money for that product. There were parents who were super excited to find a great deal for their kid during the holiday rush and I felt like it having to sell it to them. I was working customer service and they were usually calling to see how legit the product was. I left soon afterwards. Is it hard to see why? So I wasn't able to see the full consequence of that deal. Worked at a restaurant that also did catering. People would come in for tastings regularly for things like weddings and we'd give them samples of some of our food. The big thing at these tastings was the cheesecake. Which was made in house to be served in the restaurant and was pretty great. What we didn't tell them was that for catering events, we bought pomade cheesecakes instead. I think they were Marie Callender's. Basically we'd sell them on our cheesecake then give them something less good that was easier cheaper for us. Honestly, we were stretching ourselves a little thin with catering. It was always a mess trying to get all the food prepared as well as run the restaurant. We had one chef who worked every single day and the waiters doubled as caterers. Sometimes working long wait and catering shifts back to back. When I still worked there. Staples charge 160 for basically running malware bite and see cleaner and called it virus removal. And I think most people know 160 was bullet for that. But it was always the old people that got screwed with that BS. I machine embroider shirts for different companies. If the stitching doesn't line up, such as an outline around a logo, and the colors allow for it, we have a bucket full of markers to recolor the tread. Even going as far as coloring the shirt that shows through to make it look cohesive. The best ones are Sharpie or dry erase markers. 
In Canada we have the scanning code of practice. We weren't allowed to tell customers that their stuff should be free if it rang up wrong. We don't wash the blankets every day. Your AC probably has mildew mold in it unless you have a full size AC in it. Also we don't vacuum your floor very well. And not everything at break is fresh cooked. I worked at a high end resort. Like $2000 person a night at the time. They billed themselves as eco. But did things that definitely weren't. Probably the most enjoyable were the slop dumping runs. Where we would go and dump kitchen scraps in the ocean. The idea was to not have bears get into it. So we'd freeze it in 5 gallon buckets and go dump it in the ocean. We used the same spot. And had a crab trap set up there. Because this stuff attracted crabs like crazy. We were instructed to not dump slop on guest arrival days though. Since there was a bit of a slick formed. Who knew rich people food was so fatty? Anyway. One day we forgot and dumped a load on an arrivals day. When one of the guests commented on the slick. I blamed the fish farms nearby. They have since changed their ways. And run a pretty good show now. But back in the day. We were eco in front redneck in the back. A burrito chain that I worked at was on undercover boss. In the episode, the chain wouldn't let ABC show the fact that our guacamole comes from avocado paste not fresh avocados. The turnover rate is insane. The leadership is a cult. If you get in trouble they cut your pay in half and make you work twice as hard then fire you. That we're not wearing any pants behind these desks. That's why we don't get up. My old boss invented a fake employee that he would blame all mistakes on when speaking with customers. Once in a while, he would tell the customers he fired that imaginary employee and then come up with a new name for a new imaginary employee that would be the new sucker. I worked at a popular chain sandwich restaurant in the Chesapeake Bay region. Many customers would order the crab sandwich, which was on our local menu as seafood sensation. The mixture was just thawed imperial crab which is just fish, and mayonnaise. We were told not to tell customers that it lacked any actual crab. It was also foul smelling and plain disgusting. Edit. First of all, RIP my inbox. Secondly, it was indeed Subway. I'm not sure why I felt like being ambiguous. Thirdly, I'm not knocking anyone for liking it, but I will say that it was not popular and we did not often refill our stock of it. There were often time where we would finally empty the bin of it. Only to pull it on the cold well and see that it had expired. Again. Expiration dates don't always mean inedible. But in the case of fish. It can be risky. Also. At my particular subway. We would turn the cold well off an hour before close to allow for the ice to thaw off the walls so we could clean it without our rag freezing to the metal. Take that as you will. But it probably indicates a strong lack of temperature regulation for most products. In fast food, drive through comes first because they're the majority of customers. If you come in you'll get your food between us serving drive through They've asked a few girls on their periods to keep working. Also we're not supposed to talk about the prostitution that goes on. The club doesn't make anything from it and aren't doing anything illegal. But we're not supposed to draw attention to it anyway. I worked as a delivery driver for this Japanese restaurant that had two location about 10 minutes apart. We only had one delivery driver on duty at a time and we were not allowed to tell the customers. What sucked about that is that both restaurants had a delivery radius of 5 miles and sometimes there would be a delivery order at the other location which was only like 1 mile away from the house you were supposed to deliver to. But really it was a longer drive for you since you were like 5 miles away at the other location. Not only would you just get a $2 delivery fee when it should have been $5, but then you had to deal with people angry that their food took so long when they thought you were super close. On top of that, when you were working as a cashier, the only tips you were allowed to keep were the ones left on the table. Any ones left one of the two tip jars we had, or written on credit card receipts in the restaurant, went to the owners and not us. It felt nice when people would tip us because we provided a good service. But then it felt itty that you wouldn't see any of that money. Do not buy produce from Walmart. Just don't do it. We get a fresh shipment every day. One quarter of which is already rotten. I don't mean a little mold. I mean rotten to the point of putrefaction. These items tend to be on top. So. Everything below them has been fouled by a cascade of slurry. 
The next quarter has clearly been dropped on the floor of the warehouse and then hastily placed back together. Blueberries and strawberries. Intermingled with reckless abandon. The third quarter is completely smashed. Now, Walmart is not known for its stringent hiring policies. But the people who build and ship these pallets have so little understanding of how physics works that I find 6 15 pounds, 7 kg, boxes of apples precariously balanced on a single veggie tray. The final quarter is perfectly edible, but it all goes to the floor. Because duck you guys. Edit. Thank you. I meant to write 15 pounds. I just made a stupid error. If something you eat says no edit, X. This means whatever ingredient X is, it has been added instead by adding an ingredient naturally high in that in lieu of adding it in its pure form. For example if you've got something that says no added MSG, they likely threw a bunch of yeast extract in there instead, which contains plenty of MSG. Edit. A few people commented, and I fully agree, that MSG is not bad or dangerous by any standard unless you have an allergy. MSG makes food have better flavor and texture and doesn't make something less healthy, except for the health effects of sodium in general. This is just an example. They do the same things with other, actually worrisome ingredients, such as sodium nitrite. At one spa it was the clocks. They didn't want clients to see what time it was because they would make us cut their massage sessions so they didn't want them to know they were being cheated. At my last spa, our aromatherapy we charged extra for wasn't even real aromatherapy. My boss didn't want to pay the money for real essential oils so they bought fragrance oil or worse. Flavors used to usually make lip balm. I worked in car rental in Ireland. We weren't supposed to sell the extra insurance to Spanish or Italian customers, because they are not known for being great drivers and often damage the cars. Much more profitable to only sell insurance to people who won't use it. We don't have quality control to make sure people's Medicaid doesn't get screwed up by our grossly incompetent employees who are too dense to comprehend eligibility rules. I worked at a grocery store with a bakery. The fresh baked bread was fresh baked. The fresh baked garlic bread was the bread that didn't sell yesterday with garlic butter on it. Edit. It has been pointed out to me that this is how it is normally made. My main point was that we were told not to inform customers of this and tell them it was baked fresh that morning. That our credit card had about a 24% interest rate. I had to tell them they'd get approved in 2 minutes. But honestly over half the time their credit was too bad for them to get approved. Waste of their time but I just made some extra money. At Green, they told us to tell customers rain won't wash away the liquid fertilizer and weed control we spray. But it does. A simple google search will tell you. They also tell customers we can kill crab grass and other grassy weeds. What they don't tell you is that when grassy weeds die they don't wilt away. They turn purple. But they will still be there. I work in a body shop and they were telling me a story of when they received a car from a crash. When they get a new car they always clean it first while washing out the blood they found a nose. They didn't really try to hide it but they never told any customers that it was in the next room. Law firm. Hi. Thanks for holding. The attorney is actually in a meeting with another client right now. Can I take a message for you and they can't call back when they are free? Hangs up phone goes back to talking to attorney who didn't want to talk to phone person. Four star hotels are slowly but surely turning into two star hotels but double the price and a different brand. Almost all hotel managers employ the same zero hours minimum wage zero experience don't give a duck. Because why should they? Employees and try to run the business with as few staff on shift as possible. This means that the quality of service you get is going to be basically the same at the Hilton or the Holiday Inn because both places are employing identically skilled staff. That's not even mentioning all the other corners being cut at basically every hotel everywhere. Most of the time it feels like a pure goddamn miracle the place is still standing by the end of your shift. I cannot ducking wait to leave this toxic at hole of an industry. No more in the back. Just whatever is on the shelves when you're too lazy to walk back and actually check get it. HR guy here. We are not your friend. Coles chapters indigo. It is less expensive to tear off the front and back cover of a pocket paperback novel and send it back to the publisher for a fund. Rather than to send the whole book or sell at a reduced cost. 
why this is bad, employees must destroy the rest of the book so it is no longer readable and dispose of them in black garbage bags, or risk being fired. Disposing of these books one night led me to finding a Payless Shoes employee throwing away garbage bags full of shoes that did not sell. Employees must cut out the tongue of the shoe so they are not usable should someone find them. All the dances on stage. Wandering around doing table dances and in the VIP rooms are either partially drunk or indulging in one or more illicit substances. Hard to be the sober naked person in the room when everyone else is partying. It just makes it so much easier to relax. Be seductive. Enjoy yourself and make more money. I work at a place that makes artisan french fries. For the last year or so, we've advertised plain old red potatoes as Laura potatoes. Which are similar but 10,000 x better. A red potato is red on the outside and white starchy like a russet on the inside. A Laura potato is red on the outside and gold. Buttery. Smooth. All around awesome on the inside. It's implicit. But we're pretty much encouraged to just lie to people. We only got called out once when an actual potato farmer came to eat there. But other than that. We mostly get away with it. The injustice of it all. I worked at a gym for a year. We gave out keys for lockers in the locker room. And most people would hold on to them. One individual would stuff the key in his underwear. Sweat. And then give it back to us after working out. We couldn't, and wouldn't, tell anyone where that specific key was previously. We, of course, sprayed it with disinfecting spray. But I felt bad for whoever had the key next. It was always the same dude. Two. Restaurant worker here. The photo album. Literally. Full of pictures the GM and other farm managers posing with the rats they shot with the restaurant owned pallet gun. Long story short. This was a very old restaurant built into a hill in a nice coastal town on the central California coast. The main building, which housed the kitchen and two of the main dining rooms was probably 80 years old by the time I was working there so there was an established rodent problem. Anyhow, after service was said and done for the night, and the cleaners were done cleaning, the managers would leave the hood vent and the lights on and establish a line of sight that ran about 150 yards along the pantry kitchen. The hotline. Dish pit and into the prep kitchen. The story goes that they would grab a bottle of whatever they wanted to drink and post up for hours drinking and killing rats. I vividly remember a picture of the GM holding a dead rat by the tail with this huge it eating grin across his face. Priceless. Major mortgage loan servicer. We denied non-hamp modifications to risk borrowers. Defined as not currently employed and no work history for 5 plus years. I pointed out to one of the SR Ops guys that we were inadvertently targeting recently divorced single moms and he got real mad at me. Few months later. We adjusted our rules engine. At Denny's I worked for they would take the almost out Tabasco bottles and mix them together. Also the ranch was made with water instead of milk. And the manager would still serve soup hours after the heater had turned off even those containing dairy.